I would just, you know, read Quran over and over and over again to get credit. But I nev that never made me closer to God. But I always was so hungry and thirsty and desperate to get to know God. I think it was my third night that I was reading the Bible. The Bible said Jesus is God himself also, you know, because he's the son of God. That made me so angry. And I threw the book, corner of the wall. I said, you know, this book was corrupted because Muslims, they believe that the Bible being corrupted. سلام خوش آمدید اهلا و سهلا بكم اعزائي المشاهدين في برنامج رحلة مسلم الى الرجاء Hello and welcome to today's program A Muslim Journey to Hope My name is Muhammad Saeed I was born in the Middle East yet never heard the gospel because I was raised into a Muslim family in the Islamic faith For many years Islam was the guiding force in my life but through a series of unique events I began to hear the gospel message and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Today, I am so blessed to have a personal relationship with him, and it's my prayer that each and every one of you would also come to know the true love of Jesus Christ. Each week on this program, we will share with you wonderful stories from people who were also raised in the Islamic faith, yet through a variety of circumstances, they too learned to put their faith in Jesus Christ. I urge you to listen to what they have to say. They are real stories, real stories from people just like you and me. Today we'll hear from a gentleman from the Middle East who struggled to know Allah in a deeper way. Yet, through his struggles, something led him to search for the real answers to the questions of his heart. Here is his story. Yeah, I, I grew up in a Muslim family. And the parents, they were not really strict Muslim. But I became a very, very, very strict Muslim because of the thirst and the hunger that I had for creator of the whole world. And I used to think that his name is Allah because that's what I heard from my family member. And I really strongly used to believe that he is the only way. His name is Allah. And I strongly believed all of his rules. And even in my wildest imagination, I couldn't even imagine that that's not true. I believed it 100% with all of my heart that I really have to do good thing to go to heaven. If I don't, I will go to hell. But I always had a love for God. I really wanted to get to know Him. And I started to buy some Islamic books, start to read them. Actually, Muslim leader they told me that if you read Quran over and over and over again you get extra credit if you wake up so early in the morning and read Quran over and over that will really give you extra credit and I would just you know read Quran over and over and over again to get credit but I nev that never made me closer to God but I always was so hungry and thirsty and desperate to get to know God for more than 12 years of my life, 10, 12 years, I can't remember, but between 10 to 12 years of my life, I was pursuing God, but I couldn't have a close relationship with Him. Then I gave up. I was so angry. I went to this hotel in Cyprus, and in the lobby, I saw this book stand. I got closer, and I saw his Bible. And I had a, I had a desire just to read it. And I asked the guy, I said, can I, have, can I read the Bible? Can I just read it, borrow it? He said, you can have it. That shocked me. I said, you want to give it to me? He said, yes. He signed the Bible. He gave it to me. Then I went to my room and I started to just to read the Bible. 
and the word just Jesus was just, just it was like popping out of the Bible, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I think it was my third night that I was reading the Bible. The Bible said Jesus is God himself also, you know, because he's the son of God. That made me so angry, and I threw the book, the corner of the wall. I said, you know, this book was corrupted, because Muslims, they believe that Bible being corrupted. And I didn't touch the Bible for three years. No one ever told me anything about Jesus. I never heard anything. And after three years, I went to this school, and my teacher started to talk to me about Jesus. And she started to tell me about love of Jesus and blood of Jesus, that Jesus' blood can forgive you, and you receive forgiveness through the blood of Jesus, and God is love. And I couldn't relate that God is love because I never received love from God. I was a slave of God, that who he didn't want even to talk to or respond to. And I really, it was in my wildest imagination, I couldn't believe God is love. It didn't make sense to me. And one night as I was just talking to one of her friends, I felt in my heart, very deep down inside, that I need to pray to Jesus. I said, how can I pray to Jesus? And she said, salvation prayer, which is, you say that Jesus, I receive you as the Lord of my life, I accept your forgiveness, and I believe that you are the Son of God. But I was uncomfortable with that. I couldn't say. I wanted to be honest. You know, I want to, after 12 years of my life being after God, I got to the place that I said, you know what, I need to be honest. I said, can I pray with my own language? She said, yes. Because when I was Muslim, my language was different. I had to pray in Arabic. I wanted to make sure that if it's okay to pray with my own language. She said, yes, you can pray with your own language. I start to pray and I was so honest with God. I felt I should be honest with Jesus. I said, Jesus, I don't believe that you're the Son of God. I really don't. But if you're the Son of God, I invite you to come to my life. I don't believe that your blood has any power to forgive my sin at all. But if your blood has any power to forgive my sin, I accept it. If you can build the relationship between me and the God who created the whole world that you claim that he's your father, of course I invite you to come to my heart. I give you full permission to do anything you want to do with my heart from this moment on. I went to church after that prayer. I felt that I should go. I didn't go to church as a Christian. Still, I went to church as a Muslim. But the Muslim who was so disappointed of God, broken heart, I went as a broken hearted, you know. I went to church, but I felt so good. The whole atmosphere, it was feeding me. I was crying, you know, just tear was just going down. But it was a good kind of feeling or good kind of crying. It wasn't sad. And at the third time that I went to church, <sighs> that day I was a little bit late. I had to go and sit in the very first row of the church. This big church, four or five thousand people. I was so uncomfortable to sit in the very first row, but the usher told me that follow me, I had to follow him. And we couldn't find any seat. We went to the very first row of the church. And that was the place that I met Jesus. Again, pastor was talking and preaching. I really couldn't understand his preaching because I didn't have any knowledge of Bible. And I was just sitting there looking around, a little bit bored, and I saw a man standing behind pastor. I could see the thickness of the air. I start to look at him, and then he started to walk, and that really got my attention. I asked myself again, I said, who is this? The voice inside of me said, Jesus. And I laughed at that voice. I said, huh. And as soon as I said this, he walked inside of me physically. I took a very deep breath and this fire just came all over me. Physically, I was on fire. My whole body was on fire. And something just touched my heart. I could see this hand came and just touched my heart. And I was just weeping and I was just crying and crying and crying. And my body physically was on fire. And this heat was just coming out of me. 
And I started to cry, but then she was so excited. She said, Now, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? I said, No, I don't. She said, Why not? Now, I said, Now I believe that Jesus lives and He came to me personally. But, Son of God, He n e e d to convince me that He is the Son of God. And I saw again Jesus so far into heaven, and He was right, standing in the right side of the throne. And He started to put His Spirit all over me. And it felt so good, and it felt so good, and it felt so good. And he convinced me without saying anything. I was convinced. It's like my heart knew he was the Son of God. And I was just saying, Oh my God, yes, he's the only way. He's the only way. I, all of a sudden, I realized. And what happened? I jumped, I got my energy back. No one invited me. I went to the altar. I, I ran to the altar. I got to my knee. And I start to worship Jesus and I bow down to Him. And it was the most, one of the most beautiful moments of my life. This humongous peace came over me. I was walking with peace. And I had so much love from the Lord. But the, I think for my life, it was the highlight was peace. I never had peace before. And I, I was, it's like I was swimming inside of peace. If you don't have peace, If you don't really have joy, if you're not really sure that we will go to heaven, and if you never ever receive any love from God, try Jesus. Because He will give you love, He will give you joy, He will give you peace. You don't need to believe us as a Christian. We go to Himself. We go to Jesus. He will show up in different ways, sometimes through dreams. But the result is love, peace, joy. That's the result. If I die today, I know He is waiting there for me and I'm going to jump into His arm. So I know that I don't need to be a good person to jump into His arm. He is waiting there. But if I get the chance to live 30, 40, 50 years, I know my heart will be more clean. That doesn't make me a righteous person. My heart is more clean, then I can see more of His beauty. The more our heart gets clean, the more we can receive His love. You know? But if I die today, I know I'm not going to say, Oh, Jesus, you're so holy. I'm going to jump on his shoulder. You know, I'm going to jump. You know, I'm going to dance with him. I'm going to jump I'm go- because he's my closest friend. And can our Muslim friends say, If I see God, I'm going to jump to his lap? I know it's hard to give up of all of your belief because it's so familiar. Everything that is so familiar, it's easy. You did it over and over again, and there is comfort into it. But if you don't have peace, go ahead and change it. Let Jesus come and turn your world upside down and introduce Himself to you as love. Do you feel enslaved in fear to your God, or is Allah a friend, reachable and personal? Someone that you can communicate with. Do you wish to be able to relate to God at any time and talk to Him as your Heavenly Father? Cameron had these questions, and like Cameron, I too always had a thirst and hunger for a true relationship with God, but I knew of no source that would lead me to that place of communion. That is until I read the Bible, the Injil, which quotes Jesus as saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The first time I read this, I was in shock and couldn't accept it. Like Cameron, I struggled with it for three years. I used to pray to Allah alone, worship Him, and fear Him. So how can I now pray to Jesus? Jesus had to deal with me. He had to touch me and talk to me so that I would open up, listen, understand, and accept who the Bible claims him to be. It wasn't until I went to Mecca and was at the foot of the Kaaba that Christ came to me, personally revealed himself to my spirit. It was there that I knelt on my knees to the Almighty. I asked him to reveal himself to me, and he did. That was the most beautiful moment of my life because for the first time, I could see with spiritual clarity. Shukran lillah. I accepted him there as my Lord and Savior. From that moment on, 
I started walking and living in peace. In hopes of leading you to that place of clarity, I would like to share with you today the words of the Injil Sharif concerning the attributes of Jesus. But before we look at the Bible, let's consider first the teaching of the Quran that remarkably supports the, Bible, the biblical claims. In Surah Maryam, Ayah 17, we are told, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا Here God is saying, do you feel enslaved in fear to your God or is Allah a friend reachable and personal? Someone that you can communicate with. Do you wish to be able to relate to God at any time and talk to him as your heavenly father? Cameron had these questions and like Cameron, I too always had a thirst and hunger for a true relationship with God, but I knew of no source that would lead me to that place of communion. That is until I read the Bible, the Injil, which quotes Jesus as saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The first time I read this, I was in shock and couldn't accept it. Like Cameron, I struggled with it for three years. I used to pray to Allah alone, worship Him, and fear Him. So how can I now pray to Jesus? Jesus had to deal with me. He had to touch me and talk to me so that I would open up, listen, understand, and accept who the Bible claims him to be. It wasn't until I went to Mecca and was at the foot of the Kaaba that Christ came to me, personally revealed himself to my spirit. It was there that I knelt on my knees to the Almighty. I asked him to reveal himself to me, and he did. That was the most beautiful moment of my life, because for the first time, I could see with spiritual clarity. Shukran lillah. I accepted him there as my Lord and Savior. From that moment on, I started walking and living in peace. In hopes of leading you to that place of clarity, I would like to share with you today the words of the Injil Sharif concerning the attributes of Jesus. But before we look at the Bible, let's consider first the teaching of the Quran that remarkably supports the, Bible, the biblical claims. In Surah Maryam, Ayah 17, we are told, فَأَرْسَلْنَا إِلَيْهَا رُوحَنَا فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهَا بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا Here God is saying, Then we sent unto her our spirit, and it assumed for her the likeness of a perfect man. In essence, this tells us that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Surah Maryam, Ayah 20 قَالَتْ أَنَّا يَكُونُ لِي غُلَامٌ وَلَمْ يَمْسَسْنِي بَشَرٌ وَلَمْ أَكُوْ بَغِيَّا Mary said, How shall I have a son, seeing that no man has touched me, and I am not unchast? This verse leads us to conclude that Jesus had a miraculous birth by a virgin. Jesus healed the sick, in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 49, وَأُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ I heal him who was born blind and the leper. Jesus raised the dead in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 49, وَأُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى And I raised the dead. Muslims are also told that honor was bestowed upon him as the Word and as the Messiah in Surah Al-Imran, Ayah 45. إِذْ قَالَتْ الْمَلَائِكَةُ يَا مَرْيَمُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُبَشُّرُكِ بِكَلِمَةٍ مِّنْهُ إِسْمُهُ الْمَسِيحُ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمُ وَجِيهًا فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَمِنَ الْمُخَرَّبِينَ Behold, the angel said, O Mary, 
Allah giveth thee glad tidings of a word from him. His name will be Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, held in honor in this world and in the hereafter and of the company of those nearest to Allah. Jesus is a sign of mercy to man. Surah Maryam, Ayah 21. كذلك قال ربك هو علي هين ولنجعل ولنجعله آية للناس ورحمة منا وكان أمرا مقضيا. So it will be thy Lord saith that is easy for me and we wish to appoint him as a sign unto men and a mercy from us. It is a matter so decreed. Jesus died and was raised. Surah Al Imran, Ayah 55. It called Allah, Ya Isa, Inni Mutawafika, Wara Firuka Ilaya, Wamutahiruka Mina Ladina Kafaru. Behold, Allah said, O Jesus, I will take thee and raise thee to myself. His followers are above all. Surah Al Imran, Ayah 55. وجاعل الذين اتبعوك فوق الذين كفروا إلى يوم القيامة. I will make those who follow you above those who reject faith to the day of resurrection. Jesus has the ability to create. سورة آل عمران آية 49. إني قد جئتكم بآية من ربكم. إني أخلق لكم من الطين كهيئة الطير. I bring you a miracle which is creating a bird from clay. So as you see, according to the Quran, Islam teaches that Jesus was risen and he is alive today. And he will come back as the judge for the end of time. How then is it logical for Muslims to conclude that Jesus is merely a prophet when it is obvious that he is so much more? I would propose that the Islamic confusion of Christ is the result of not acknowledging the claims of the Injil al-Sharif. Let's look at what the biblical text has to say in conjunction with the Quran. In the Bible we learn that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 1 verse 20 Behold an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying Joseph son of David do not be afraid to take to you Mary your wife for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Jesus had a virgin birth. Matthew chapter 1 verse 22 to 23. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus healed the sick. John chapter 5 tells about a man in Jerusalem by the sheep gate pool this man was born an invalid. At the age of 38, Jesus saw him and said to him in John verse 6, Do you want to be healed? The sick man responded that he has no one to help him. In verse 8, Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was healed. He picked up his mat and walked. Notice here that there was no mention of by the grace of God, bi'idnillah. Rather, it shows clearly that Jesus, by his own willpower, ordered the man to be healed. Jesus raised the dead. John chapter 11 tells the story of Lazarus, the brother of Mary and Martha. When Lazarus was sick, they came to Jesus telling him about Lazarus. Later, he told them that he's been dead for three days. Jesus in John 11 verse 40 through 44 said, 
Did I not say to you, if you believe, you will see the glory of God? In amanti tarayna majdallah. Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with stripes of linen and a cloth around his, his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Jesus led sinless life. John chapter 8, verse 46. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Jesus asked. He knew no sin, since he is the perfect man. Jesus had authority over demons. Luke chapter 4, verse 41 says, Demons came out of many people shouting, You are the Son of God. Jesus is the Word. John chapter 1 verse 1 In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Kalimatullah means Allah Himself. Jesus is the one from heaven. John chapter 8 verse 23 And He said to them, You are from below, I am from above, you are of this world, I am not of this world. Jesus has knowledge of the future. In Mark chapter 13, Jesus talks about what will happen at the end of times. Jesus has authority over nature. John chapter 6 verse 18, strong wind was blowing and the waters grew rough. When they had drove three and a half miles, they saw Jesus approaching the boat, walking on the water. As you can see thus far, the Bible and the Quran make very similar claims concerning the person of Jesus, but the Quran never draws its readers to a conclusion. The Bible, however, does. From the Injil we learn that Jesus has the ability to forgive sins. Mark chapter 2, verse 5, When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. And therefore, because of that authority, Jesus is qualified to be the Savior of the world. Luke chapter 2, verse 11, supports this. It states, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. Jesus himself said in John chapter 8, verse 12, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Let me ask you this. If Jesus has the ability to create, give life, heal the sick, and raise the dead from his own personal willpower, then who is he? Is he just a man, or God, or even both together? Isn't he then divine? Who else is divine but God? And if he is therefore God, what is keeping you from giving your life to him today? Won't you bow your head right now and receive the salvation that only Christ can give? It doesn't matter what your background is, or where you were born, Jesus Christ loves you. He died and rose again so that you could have eternal life with Him. Won't you accept His free gift of salvation? All you need to do is pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and forgive me of my sins. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and make me new. I believe that you're the Son of God and that you came to save me. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Take control of my life and guide me in your will and your ways. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Friends, if you said this prayer with me, I'd like to welcome you to the family of God. And I'd love to hear from you please contact me through our website www.muslimjourneytohope.com When you log on, 
you will find some wonderful materials both in English and Arabic which are designed to encourage you in this new relationship with Jesus Christ. Also, please email me with any questions or concerns you may have about what you've heard on the program. I want to help you as much as I can, so I look forward to responding to your emails. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to join us again next time when we'll share another true story about the transforming power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Until then, goodbye and God bless you. Ya Rab, Father, I lift up my heart right now and plead on behalf of my Muslim friends and my Muslim family and the Muslim people that they may come to know you and be added to the family of God. Thank you, Jesus, that you do answer prayer. And I ask you in Jesus' mighty name, thank you. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.